Welcome to the Council on a European Summit Day. The 27 heads of state and government meet regularly here in Brussels. Today they have very serious matters to discuss. The disaster in Japan, the crisis in Libya and the Euro. We are going to discuss the situation in Japan. The situation of the nuclear plant in Fukushima has showed me, as a German Chancellor, that we cannot continue to act as before. This is an important European Council. I think it's important that the countries of Europe show political will, show ambition and show unity. The changes in a number of Arab countries are of a historic dimension. We must make sure that we're all on the same page to define a clear line so our action can be in concert with that of the international community. The challenge now is that Europe as a whole sends a very strong and convincing message to the international markets that uh, it is supporting a stable euro and is supporting all eurozone countries. The 27 EU leaders are convened by the permanent president of the European Council, Herman van Rompuy. The European Council is comprised of the heads of state and government of the 27 EU member states. I chair meetings of the European Council, of which there are at least four each year, and in practice six or seven. The European Council gives the European Union its main impetus by providing the broad lines and priorities for EU policies. All European citizens are directly affected by what's discussed around this table. It's here that, at the start of the meeting, the heads of state and government greet each other. But they're not the only ones who use this room. Other meetings of ministers and meetings of the Council are also held here, such as the Councils of Ministers of Agriculture, Transport, the Environment and Foreign Affairs. And each time you have the 27 delegations plus the Presidency and the Commission in attendance. The Council is the main decision-making body, although it does increasingly share this role with the European Parliament. What's specific to the Council is that here the Member States cooperate and negotiate on a daily basis. This takes place at all levels, at the highest level with the European Council, at the ministerial level with the Council of Ministers, at the level of ambassadors and permanent representatives committee co-repair, and at the base level, that is, in the working groups comprising national civil servants. The ministers examine the Commission's legislative proposals and share the decisions with the European Parliament in a large number of areas. For all legislative work, the ministers deliberate in public and their debates can be followed live online. I think it's right and proper that our emphasis should be on uh, renewable technologies and energy efficiency technologies particularly. The ministers representing the member states are committed by the decisions that they take together. Today we have a um, fishery agenda, so to say. We have to fix the tax and quotas. Today, the 27 ministers of economic affairs have taken an important decision to stimulate innovation in Europe. They've given the green light to a simplified European patent framework. This will considerably alleviate administrative burdens on inventors. And the Hungarian presidency is convinced that uh, the enhanced cooperation will be beneficial for 500 million Europeans and all the businesses in Europeans irrespective from their nations. Once a month, the foreign ministers meet at the Council under the presidency of High Representative Catherine Ashton. The critical thing at the moment was the decision that was taken under the resolution 1973 to do everything that we can to try and support the people on the ground, the people in Libya. The High Representative is also in charge of the Union's external aid. 
Europe can launch missions to manage crises in troubled regions. At the moment, these European ships are fighting piracy off the coast of Somalia. And European soldiers are training Somali troops to help restore order in their country. Europe's citizens are at the heart of the Council's concerns. For the Ministers of Justice and Home Affairs, that means helping citizens to better enjoy one of the great advantages of the European Union, freedom of movement. As a recent popular movie reminds us, today, thanks to Europe, there's no longer any need to say, nothing to declare. It reminds me of when we were young. When we crossed the border, there was a customs post and you had to declare any goods, show your passport. And when we were with our parents, there was even some tension when we went to France or the Netherlands or Luxembourg. It was kind of an adventure. We really had the impression that we were leaving our country. Today, we're in Europe. There are no more borders. You just cross the border without realizing it. Psychologically speaking, it's a completely different world. From seven countries which had decided to abolish border controls, we now have 25. This is an enormous extension of the space of freedom in Europe. Return to the European Council in March 2011. A big decision has just been taken, the Pact for the Eurozone. We adopted the Euro Plus Pact. It will provide a new quality of economic coordination. We put in place the economic government of Europe. So I welcome the steps that Eurozone countries are committing to take today. We now have the pact for the Euro. In addition to the 17 Euro member states, we have six states in support. I think that's very encouraging. Economy. I think we have no other choice but to focus on the economy. If we want to be taken seriously in the world, we need to be strong economically. If we want to protect our social model, we need a strong economy in order to finance it. In reality, our task is simple. Greater economic strength so that we can also defend our values in the world more effectively.